Hello and welcome to the first edition of Hawk Magazine. We have an exciting show ahead of us today. We'll talk to men's basketball coach Rob de Grand Prix about an impressive season and catch up with Koran Briggs, a sophomore from Chance, Maryland. Then we'll switch to women's basketball. And we'll talk to women's head coach Nicole Bullock. And she brings along the outstanding graduate student Ashley Schroeder from Caledonia, Minnesota. All of this and more up next on Hawk Magazine. Hello, I'm with coach, head coach of the Hilbert men's basketball team, Rob DeGrampre. How are you doing today, coach? I'm doing good, Jamal. Thanks for having me. All right. So in your interview, you are just completed year 21. You know, how does that feel? It's been a long, long time. I guess I'm not getting any younger, it's, uh, <clears throat> but it's a pleasure to be here, and um, I've enjoyed my, my, all my years here at Hilbert College. Could you ever imagine doing this, you know, 21 years when you started way back in 2002? I think, um, you know, when you... College athletics is such a mover shaker business that not too many people stay in one place for too long, and um, you know it's 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 a blessing to be able to stay and uh, you know not have to relocate and and pick up and you know move on. So um, I feel like we've built something special here, and it's getting better and better. And um, you know I've enjoyed it um, really and truly. It's a labor of love. So had a good year this year, right? Started. Off five and zero, oh, finished nine and five, third overall in the conference. Um, seven of the nine wins being by what, one possession. Have you ever seen anything quite like it? So I think in, in all my years of doing this, this was probably the, um, I guess the most interesting when you study the statistics and you look at, you know, the outcome of some of these games. How so many games could have gone one way or the other. And um, while there were probably you know four or five we'd love to have back. There was also probably four or five that we were, you know, we were pretty fortunate. We pulled a rabbit out of our hat at the end to find a way to win. And um, I mean, that's the great thing about college basketball. It's exciting, and um, you know, we've got good players. And uh, I think, you know, we're just kind of scratching the surface with some of the people we have. What kind? What comes to your mind when I say the words Quran Briggs? Absolutely love him. You know, he's uh, he's a winner on the court. He's a winner off the court. Um, he represents us well in everything he does. Um, you know, the recruiting process for Quran was kind of unique. Uh, you know, his, his senior year of high school uh, was basically taken away from him during the COVID year. Uh, we just lucked out. Um, I, I saw him down at a, an AAU event that was, uh, <laughs> I don't want to say it was closed, but um, let's just say I found a way in. And, um, but it was down near you know, the, the, the greater Philadelphia, Pennsylvania area. When, when COVID sidelined you know, a lot of activity up here in New York State, we had to go elsewhere to um, you know, look for our next recruiting class. And um, I think we were pretty fortunate to find Quran that you know, that one Saturday afternoon in, um, I think it was Lancaster, Pennsylvania. So, uh, you know, building the relationship and, you know, connecting the dots in terms of what he was looking for, but also what we were looking for. Um, I, I wouldn't say he was the funnest guy to recruit because we didn't get a chance to watch him play, um, you know, throughout his senior year. But based on what we had, um, you know, with video now and, and what we were able to see when we caught him that one weekend, um, you know, I knew he was, he was going to be somebody special, and um, I'm, I'm glad he's wearing the royal and white. Yeah, I'm glad he's with us, too. <laughs> um, obviously, to end the season, one-point loss, not, uh, not very ideal. How do you, uh, you know, bounce back to, you know, to get over that loss for next year? I think, um, you know, what I'll take away from it is, we, you know, overall, we had so many games that, you know, went down to the wire like that. And, and again, some we were, you know, very fortunate to pull out and, and be victorious. And in others, you know, we let slip through our fingers. And I think if, you know, if you have a game that, you know, you lose by 30 points, you, you got some problems. You got multiple problems. If you're losing a game by one point or it's, a, you know, really becomes a one possession battle, I think uh, those are easier to fix. Uh, you know, you have, you have one or two things to clean up as opposed to, you know, an enormous number of, of um, you know, we'll just say things that you gotta, you gotta correct. So I, I think, uh, you know, that game, uh, it, it definitely leaves a bad taste in everybody's mouth, but, um, you know, it was interesting. I'm, I'm not trying to make excuses. We were, we were down a guy, um, you know, who had a, um, you know, a tragic, uh, we'll just say a family situation overcome him, uh, you know, hours before the, before the game. We were definitely counting on him. But really and truly, the guys that, 
you know, that did step on the floor that night gave us everything they had. So I think, um, you know, it was certainly a winnable game. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll take some pride in, in how hard we played. Unfortunately, um, you know, that time of the year when you get into the playoffs and things like that, the, the, the margin for error is just very minimal. And uh, missed free throws, turnovers, take one or two of those away, and, you know, we're probably moving on to the semifinals. Yeah, um, just find a question here. Going into next year for recruiting, do you feel like there's any positions of need or do you just need some depth or just trying to get some guys? I always feel like the, you know, the first thing we do is we kind of evaluate um, you know, the roster we have. You know, obviously, we have some seniors that are going to be moving on and um, you know, we'll wish them the best of luck. I think uh, you, know, you can always get better at every position. So everything's on the table. You know, it's, uh, I don't want to say it's completely open season, but we are really looking at you know, improving in all of our, you know, in all areas and all positions. We certainly need depth. Uh, we, we would love to bring in some more size. We'd love to bring in some more speed and quickness. Um, if you look at you know, some of the statistics, you know, we, were, we were second in the AMCC this year in points scored per game. You know, we can flat out score, but we were you know, also second to last in giving up points. And, and that's, that's a problematic area. You gotta be able to defend and, and prevent your opponent from scoring, especially in critical situations. That's a big area for, for significant improvement for you know, the people that we have coming back. So I think everything's on the table. You know, we're we're definitely looking to improve in a variety of areas, and um, you know, we need we need to shoot the ball better from the perimeter. That was not one of our strengths this year, uh, and with Zach Miller moving on and graduating, you know, that's going to become um, there's some big shoes to fill there. We we definitely have to find some more guys that can, you know, make long perimeter shots and and tack three points on the board for us. For sure, Coach De Grand Prix, Thanks for joining us today. Appreciate Jamal, you. thanks for having me. Hello, I'm Jamal Harris. I'm here with Hilbert College men's basketball player Karan Briggs. Karan, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Just asked you a few questions about basketball. So uh, obviously, first team all conference, yeah. all tournament team. Uh, your fourth leading scorer in the conference. How did you? How were you able to achieve so much uh, success this year? Uh, I think it's working with my trainers back home. Uh, they they really helped me prepare after my freshman year. I had a great freshman year, and you know I stayed in the gym all summer, worked on my shot, worked on attacking in the rim. Just making my shots overall, and I think that's what helped me prepare for my sophomore year. So I think it was pretty successful. Yeah, I'm glad you know as a freshman you were pretty good. You know, you were the team MVP, yeah. um, a couple other honors. If, you know, if I just went back a few years ago and told you high school itself, all the stuff you would have achieved just two years into college, what, what would you have said? Honestly, I, I wouldn't believe it. I wouldn't believe it. Uh, coming into my freshman year, you know, I was always worried about my weight, a little bit about my height, but you know. Uh, I put all that aside and I, I just played with my heart and with my team and, you know, good coaching staff, it all helped. So I, I gave all things to them, so. Yeah. So I think the best way to describe you would be probably a prolific scorer, right? Yeah. So, I mean, last year you averaged about 13 points a game and then this year you averaged just about 19 points a game, yeah. but like a six point increase, you know, how were you able to improve that from, that's a pretty big leap from year one to year two? You know, after my freshman year, I really, I really, I learned the game a lot more, you know, how to score, how to defend. That helped a lot with that experience and, you know, watching film, all of that, and just really just having time to think about, you know, what I could do differently to, you know, help my team win and help myself overall. I think after, you know, watching film and all that, that, that really helped, so. Yeah. Would you describe your, would you think you like are a complete player or would you still say you maybe have some stuff to work on with your I game? Definitely, well? I definitely have some stuff to work on. There's always something that you can always work on. So I definitely, I know I can work on, you know, rebounding, being a leader overall. I've heard that from, you know, coaches and mentors that leadership can go a long way. So that is definitely something that I want to work on. And I know I can work on that. I know we uh, had Coach here on Friday. He mentioned something interesting with recruiting you. It was a little interesting. He met you down in a tournament down in uh, Maryland. Yeah. We described that, you know, recruitment yeah, process. Yeah, so this was, this was during COVID. So, you know, I wasn't getting as many looks. I didn't have a senior season my senior year due to COVID. So... Uh, Coach Rob took a chance on me. I was playing in the AAU tournament in Pennsylvania with about 100 other teams. And, you know, without that experience, without that, uh, those games of who knows where I'd be today. But he, he took a chance on me. And, yeah, now I'm here. So, All right. We got a final question here. So uh, down by one, you know, got a big in the paint. What's your go-to move to get a bucket? Definitely one dribble pull up. That, that, that's, my, that's my move right there. I, I shot almost 50% from the field this year, so definitely get to my get to my spot and you know pull up jumper. 
that's my that's my go-to right there. All right, Karan, thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. Thanks. I'm here with head coach of the women's basketball team for Hilbert, Nicole Bullock. Um, Nicole, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. Just to ask you a few questions about your team today. So since you're our second full year, yes, first year, eight and eighteen, made the playoffs, lost in a very close one at home. Mm -hmm. and now this year, three more wins, won a playoff game. I mean, you really beat them down. So, um, and we saw you gritting the locker room after on camera. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how do you feel just about, you know, about the win and just about the year in general? Um, I think this year was a really good step in the right direction for us. Um, we had everyone return from that previous year where I think we learned a lot, <clears throat> both coaches and student athletes. And I think that we really took a big step forward in building that foundation of the culture and the precedents that we want to set for our program and I'm really proud of this year. We did a lot of things that I think people didn't anticipate us doing because we had that early playoff loss and you know we had some challenges and we, ha we had to overcome. We had a lot of new, we had a lot of freshmen, we had a lot of new faces so we had a lot of things we had to overcome and I think we just peaked at the right time and we were ready for that playoff game. We had experience from being in the playoffs. We knew what it felt like to make the playoffs and have that disappointment of not going on. And so I think we just came into that game with a much more determined attitude and a much more determined focus. So I feel really good about it. I enjoyed this year immensely. Yeah, definitely a great, great year. Um, she's not on camera right now, but you have the privilege of co coaching <laughs> Ashley Schrader for two years now. Um, how has she improved over uh, this year to last year and how um, great has it been coaching her? So coaching Ashley is like a coach's dream. She just does everything and anything that you could ever ask of her to the best of her ability every day. She comes every day ready to work. She comes every day ready to give her all to her teammates, her coaches, and, and the game in general. So for me, it has been a breath of fresh air and very enjoyable to coach her. I think for Ashley from last year to this year, just her overall leadership and demeanor on the court got a lot better. Um, her confidence got a lot better. I think last year she shocked the conference with how well she could score and how effectively and accurately she could score game after game that I think it almost shocked her a little bit that she could do that so well, so consistently, that this year it just became a norm and it became an attitude and a overall demeanor for her that just allowed her to continue to succeed. I mean, she scored a thousand points in, in three seasons. That's pretty, pretty consistent scoring and pretty accurate and efficient scoring. So for somebody to do that and to leave their mark on this program the way that she has, it's just been really fun to be a part of it. Yeah. Um, this building on what you said earlier, I know because you said you brought a lot of people back um, from last year. I know one person you did lose halfway through the year, obviously Macy, uh, the former, obviously conference defensive player of the year, very mm -hmm. good player for you. How was it adjusting to that, you know, losing such a you know, vital piece of the team like that? You know, I think we thought early on that we would be okay and we would transition really smoothly with it because we, we had spent so much time just grooming the first part of the season, grooming some underclassmen to kind of fill that role. Um, and then when it actually happened, it took us a little bit to kind of re-identify who we were and kind of build that cohesion without Macy there because you did lose a big part of it. We lost, you know, double-digit points and double-digit rebounds, and so we kind of had to re-identify who we were without her, and it, it was a struggle. And we had a two-week period there in January where it was really tough, both – I think mentally, emotionally, and physically for our kids and our team and even our staff to kind of re-identify and reevaluate roles and put people in different positions so we could be successful because we were missing that vital piece. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's kind of expected losing such a great player, but obviously you guys, you know, it worked out um, and you, you know, ended up winning a playoff game, so it all worked out for you. Yeah. Um, I know I said I wasn't asking any hard questions, but um, <laughs> the last year when I asked you to grade your um, season from A to F, you mm -hmm. said about B, B plus. What would you grade this season? I, I think I would I, I would go bump us up to like an A minus to an A. We we had a lot of challenges with with so many new people and so many young women on our team of playing a lot of freshmen, playing a lot of sophomores, just playing a lot of people who had not really didn't have a lot of game experience. They had a lot of practice and 
team experience, but not necessarily game experience with with our schedule. So we could have really cashed it in, and we didn't. And so I think that's a tribute just to the kids that we've brought in, um, the culture, and just how our team is and how resilient they are. And and so I think that in the end, that allowed us to go on that run towards the end, get those last three wins, get the playoff win, and prepare us to go to, um, you know, the conference tournament down in Pittsburgh. So I, I would bump us up. I think that we, we really did put together a successful season and something that all of us should be proud of. And we had some individual performances that were – amazing and kind of set the tone for the future. So I, th I think that we really put our program in the right direction. That's good. Uh, just final question here. Yeah. Since you know, I got a taste of it. What it's <laughs> like to get a playoff victory now. Now how do you, you know, improve on that and the goals going into next season? Um, it's funny that you asked that. So all of our end of the year meetings have kind of been on that topic. So these first two seasons, I feel like we've really laid the foundation and laid the groundwork for, okay, we are no longer the program that, you know, may finish in the top four, maybe this, maybe that. We, we are a program that from now on is going to be a contender for finishing in the top half of the conference and somebody who now consistently is somebody who goes to the conference tournament and the semis and the finals. And so where does everyone individually have to take their game and their skills to get us to that point? But then also in recruiting, like when we're going out on the road and we're watching kids play, it's now, okay, do they fit the standard of expectation? Because we've laid this groundwork. We now have this foundation there. Do they fit to the level of play and level of teammate that we want to have going forward to put us in the, in those situations? Um, it's kind of an addicting feeling, right? You know, you you win that playoff game, you go to the conference final four, you you feel the the energy, the vibe, all the things, you see the trophies, you see all these things. It now becomes a tangible thing that you can see. So we now are, we've seen it, we've felt it, and we've been a part of it, and we fell short. So now we have to use that as fuel and fire to consistently get us there and make us a program that is consistently at the top. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Coach, for coming to this interview. I'm tossing it over to Miranda. Joining me today is a star player on the Hilbert College's women's basketball team, Ashley Schrader, a certified starter in every game of the season. She's averaged 16.4 points, 4.7 rebounds, and 2.6 assists this game. Now, Ashley, I wanted to start by highlighting your impressive list of accomplishments that you've ranked up. You were named the Academic All-Conference Selection three years in a row, as well as being named to the 2023 AMCC All-Tournament team. And you recently just got your 1,000 points. You're so young. You're just getting started. What do these mean to you? Um, it was a lot to me. I wasn't expecting that coming in. Um, my first season here, I think I averaged just under 10 points a game. And... I thought, oh, maybe like if, if I'm lucky, if I keep this up, you know, I can get to 1,000 by my senior year. I'd really love to do that. And then with COVID, I was like, I lose a season. And I kind of thought a lot of those accomplishments were just out of the realm of possibilities. And then coming into uh, my junior year when we had very little people, like because of sometimes injuries and sickness, sometimes we were down to six players, um, thinking that I was going to get um, to the conference tournament uh, let alone win games in the conference tournament, was something I almost didn't think was going to happen. I really wanted it to, and I wanted to put my best effort to get to that point, uh, but I didn't know if that was actually going to be possible. And so for it to like happen both years, uh, both my junior and my senior year, uh, to get to the conference tournament, and then this year being able to win a conference game against a team that had previously beaten us, uh, it was a great feeling. It is. Okay. Um, you know, you said that you've faced many challenges like COVID and being down to six girls because of injuries and stuff. You know, how do you handle the pressure of, you know, being one of the only six girls in the game or, you know, just getting the 1,000th point, you know? How do you handle that pressure? I guess it's just experience. Uh, once you've been doing it for a long time, it stops being something that you think about. Um, I think I've been playing for 13 years at this point. And it's just I was always in starting point guard role, so it was it was just kind of natural to me uh, to take control if I needed to. And maybe not so much as when I was in like in high school or younger, but then when I got to college, 
even my freshman year, I remember at one point having to call out a senior who wasn't uh, doing the plays right, who wasn't uh, putting in their best in the games. Um, and I thought that I was kind of shocked myself when I did that. Uh, I thought I was not going to be very much well liked by the team after I did that. Uh, and I didn't want to like step on any toes or anything like that. But going on, I think I did have to gain some more leadership experience with like playing at such a high level and like trying to control the court with like four other people on it on my team and try and control the way that we're playing. Uh, so it was also like a learning curve. Like I've been doing it for a while, but also there comes a point where it becomes different and it becomes more difficult. Uh, but I think just being able to like just knowing the game and understanding uh, when to do the right things, when to take it myself, when to pass it off to someone else. I think that's what really helped me along. I was going to say, I, I love that answer. It seems like for you, confidence is key, and you're definitely a strong leader on the court. Um, but aside from being on the court, one of your teammates told me that you're a four plus one graduate, and you're going to Washington, D.C. for a Ph.D. in criminal justice. Is mm -hmm. this true? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so how do you balance school, life, sports? Uh, that's just another thing that has been, it's always been what I've done. I mean, I've gotten, I've got a lot of expectations to live up to. My sister did the same thing. She went D2 for basketball, full ride scholarship, and then went on to med school. So it's like, it's kind of in the family at this point, uh, overachieving. And I don't know, I guess I just didn't want to be second placed to um, anyone in my family. I kind of wanted to live up to the same expectations and potential that, she was showing and like show that I could do the same thing. I kind of joke with her sometimes and like, hey, maybe I'll be a doctor before you. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, so would you say, you know, your family is one of your motivations or, you know, family, you see them as idols. Do you have any other idols? Um, I think my team really is like, they're, they're my biggest, uh, they're my biggest, uh, I don't know the word, right word. Uh, motivation or yeah, they pushers. cheer me on. Yeah, They're my, they they Supporters. anything that I do. <laughs> yeah, anything that I do, they are the first ones to be like so excited for me. Um, e even more so than my family sometimes. Like I'll tell my family some good things I'll do, and they'll be excited for me. But if I tell my team something good that I've done, or they see something good that I've done, and they are just over the moon. Like when I t I told our manager on the team uh, that I got accepted into Washington D.C into American University, and she uh, like picked me up immediately and spun me around. She was so excited for me. Um, so I think like the team, just knowing that they're always there and always just supporting me and backing me up and always my biggest like hype people, there that is just so, so motivational, I think. So it seems like, you know, you and your team, you know, it seems like we had some ups, we've had some downs, you know, what's it been? What's your experience been like working with the Hilbert Hawks, being a Hilbert Hawk and being with Coach Nicole Lock, uh, comparatively, like from like my first year with uh, with Coach Amy, I think it's just a big difference in the team dynamic. Like I was my freshman year, I, w I was close with my team, uh, but not nearly in the same way as I was like during COVID or when the year after my junior year or my senior year. And I think it's just because we went through so much together. Like in the time, it seems like it sucks. And then you look back on it and you're like, wow, that was really amazing, all that we did. Like my junior year, um, we kind of, I think we call it crisis week. Um, when we, I think someone got in a car accident, someone got uh, COVID, uh, someone, like we were, we were down to six players and we had had a, can a game that we had to reschedule. So we had three games in four days, and then two of them were overnight trips. So we just kind of went Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and it at the time That's it insane. was exhausting, and it felt awful. And we won all three of them. And that was just a huge for us. And coming off of that, like in the moment, it sucked. And then afterwards when we realized, wow, we just did that. Like it was so amazing. So like... Even when there was the hard parts, looking back at those hard parts and just knowing how much we accomplished, it just made it all worth it. That's, that's like really great. So um, it seems like, you know, you've, you're just, I think it's so like 
admirable that you're just such a young woman and you work so hard and you're just such a leader. So like, what is some advice that you have to girls that, you know, are on the basketball team that want a career in criminal justice or want a career in sports? What's some advice do you have to other women out there? Um, I would say to just be persistent. I mean, I wasn't, when I was younger, I wasn't the greatest shooter. My shot actually wasn't great at all. And my mom would always get, and my dad, they would always like get so frustrated with me, they'd be like, shoot the ball. And I, I would, t they like to bring this up to me a lot. And I would always tell them, I like to pass it. <laughs> and it took a lot of persistence to get to a point where I was comfortable doing everything. And same with criminal justice. It was something that I liked. It was something like a hobby that I liked when I was younger. Um, but I was persistent with it. I was like, I'm going to go to a good program. I'm going to go get my, like when I found out that there was a master's program here, I was like, I'm going to get my master's and I'm going to play basketball at the same time. And I guess just, I didn't want to back away from my goals. And I felt like if I backed away from anything, I was kind of letting myself down. And someone who like had, had these dreams, and if I was to say, it's too hard, I really don't want to do that, like that's just letting me down more than anyone else is letting myself down. So I really say just be persistent with what you want to do and don't back down just because you think it might be too hard. Aside from basketball or even with basketball, do you see a future in basketball? Do you see that in your future? Probably not. Not that I don't like wouldn't love to continue playing. Um, I think if I could like going on to like American University, if they were looking for practice players, or even if they had some intramural teams, like I think I would like to do that. But basketball's just taken a toll on my body at this point for how long that I've been doing it. Um, and I don't think I could do another full season again with how much I've played. Like even, even my freshman year here, I played consistent minutes uh, that I wasn't expecting to as a freshman. And then coming in last year or this year and playing a lot of times like 30 to 40 a game, uh, it's a lot. So going on and doing more basketball, I think would be hard unless I kept it to like um, a lower degree, which I do want to do. I would love to, I'd love to play club or intramural and stuff like that. Do you think basketball has taught you anything that you can apply to like your academic career? I think there's a lot of leadership that carries over from sports into academics. Um, like, and you're never really going to get out of working in group settings when you get older, like academic wise, uh, career wise. And there's no individual, just no individuality in basketball. You can't do everything by yourself. You have to rely on other people. Um, some people to more degrees than others, some for different things than others. Um, like, let's say this season, like I, rebounding was not my role whatsoever. Like I would get some every once in a while, but like most of the time I would leave that up to Alicia who led the conference, I think, in offensive rebounds by a lot. So like you just knowing how to trust people, knowing other people's strengths and weaknesses is something that you don't really think about, I think, in an academic setting. But once you've played sports and have to like go through that where you have to know other people's strengths and weaknesses, what they're good at, how to delegate, um, I think that really carries over. And then once you get that PhD, what do you plan to do with it? Uh, I got two different tracks that I'm thinking. Uh, on one hand, I think I might want to go on and be a professor. I think about half of their, the graduates from the PhD program at American go on and do that. But the other half go on and work on Capitol Hill, which I think would be a really cool thing to do also. I'd like to work in uh, criminal justice policy and justice policy. So I think going on and working on Capitol Hill where I can have a huge amount of influence uh, really calls to me. Well, thank you, Ashley, for joining me today, and I wish you the best of luck for your future. Thank you. Well, that's all for this Hawk Magazine. Be sure to stay tuned for future shows, and please remember to support our Hawks. To that I say, Hawk yeah.